Hello everyone. Welcome to today's webinar on introduction to the CBEP certification, the most thought of the certification offered by the International Institute of Business Analysis, IIBA. First of all, a brief introduction about myself. My name is Ramesh Jetunga. I am an IT professional from Sri Lanka with over 13 years of experience in the industry. I started off as a web developer, graphics designer, and then a software developer, and then changed my career into business analysis and then project management. Currently, I am the Chief Innovation Officer of Size Limited, a UK-based company uh, where I am heading the operations in Sri Lanka as well as heading the innovation activities. I am also the Director Chief Operating Officer of Learn Team Private Limited, which is a startup global training provider where we focus on business analysis and project management related trainings and corporate trainings where we go in and uh, introduce the subjects as well as help people in getting certified. I'm also the director co-founder of Cerebo Consulting, which is also related to business analysis and project management, where we help organizations in setting up their BA center of excellence, as well as the project management office, as well as help them in their business analysis and project management practices, where we get their work outsourced to our company and then provide consultancy services. I'm also a CBEP certified professional, along with other certifications offered by PMI, as well as uh, Scrum Alliance and Axelos. I'm also a visiting lecturer and trainer at multiple universities in Sri Lanka, where I lecture for MSc and BSc level students, both for IT as well as management subjects, general management, strategic management, project management, and so on. So a brief outline on to today's topics, what we'll be discussing today. So first of all, we'll be looking at what IIBA is, and we'll be looking at the different certifications that are offered by IIBA. And we'll be specifically looking at the CBEP certification, which is the third level of the certifications offered by uh, IIBA. And we'll be looking at requirements that you would need to satisfy in order to apply for the CBEP certification, as well as then sit for the exam and then get this, the, to get the credential. We'll be talking about the investment that you will need to make in terms of applying as well as preparing for the exam. We'll be talking about the exam itself, what type of questions you will be getting, the distribution of questions in terms of the six knowledge areas which are defined in the BA BOC, the business analysis body of knowledge. We'll be talking about how you should prepare for the exam. We'll be discussing I'll, I'll give some examples from my experience in terms of how I prepared for the exam and what you can follow. And we'll be also talking about the live virtual classroom sessions, which are conducted by Knowledge Hut. We'll be talking about the platform, the capabilities and features that are there in the platform and how you can interact with the trainer. First of all, a, a look at IABA, International Institute of Business Analysis, is a not-for-profit organization which was found in 2003 and it is headquartered in Toronto, Canada. So it is the leading, world's leading association for the profession of business analysis. It's the organization that's, that defines the standards that needs to be followed. It defines the business analysis body of knowledge, which is the standard guide, which outlines all the tools, techniques, and the processes that needs to be followed by a business analysis professional. It also certified professionals, practitioners, at different levels or different stages in their careers. It has different certifications that are offered by IABA. And for members, there are special capabilities or special additional things that are provided by IABA in terms of sharing their knowledge, in terms of joining webinars or following blogs, articles, and so on. So these are the four levels of certifications that are offered by IABA. The first level, which is the entry-level certification in business analysis, which can be done by professionals who don't have any experience, have an interest in the field of business analysis. So if there is anyone who's doing their degree at university, who's, who's, who's going through their college education and is interested in a profession in business analysis, you can think about doing the ECBA certification. The second level of certification is the certification of capability in business analysis, CCBA. So for professionals who have about two to three, year, three years of experience, or in other words, less than 3,500 hours of experience in the BA professional profession can study for this particular certification and then get certified. 
The third level of certifications offered by IIBA is CBEP or Certified Business Analysis Professional. We are professionals with over five years of BA experience or in other words, 7,500 hours of experience can sit for this exam and then get this credential. The fourth level of certifications offered by IIBA is CBTAL or Certified Business Analysis Thought Leader. This actually does not involve any certification exam, but professionals with over 10 years of experience can actually apply for this credential and IIBA would validate your application, check your credentials, check your contribution to the industry and then offer this credential to you. So a bit about the CBEP certification. CBEP stands for Certified Business Analysis Professional, as I mentioned earlier. It's the third level of IIBA's multi-level competency-based certification program. And it's a professional certification and a registered trademark from IIBA for individuals with extensive business analysis experience and knowledge. So professionals with, who have experience, who have gone through different projects, who have gone through a lot of projects in different domains and who have experience in all the techniques, tools and practices in business analysis can actually think about doing this particular certification. So what are the requirements in order to sit for the CBEP certification? So the amount of BA experience, BA work related experience that is required in order to do this credential is to have 7,500 hours of experience in the last 10 years time period. So there may, there may be individuals who have more than 10 years of experience, but just check whether you, you can actually document your experience as business analysis experience. And if you have more than 10 years of experience, even if, if, if it does not belong to the BA category, you will not be able to document that as BA experience. So for example, if there's anyone who's, who's a HR professional or who's a marketing professional, who's actually using business analysis tools and techniques, who is doing requirement solicitation. For example, if you as a market researcher or a market ex marketing executive, if you are constantly conversing with your marketing head or if, if you're constantly conversing with your C CEO or any C-level uh, pro professional in your organization, and if you elicit the requirements and if you document the requirements using process diagrams or any, any documenting method, if you are analyzing the requirements, you can actually document that experience as business analysis experience. Similarly, if you are in the IT industry and if you have been playing the business analyst role or if you have been playing a process analyst role, a system analyst role, if you have been even been playing a quality assurance engineer's role and if you are doing some sort of analysis work using tools and techniques related to business analysis, which are defined in the BA box. You can certainly go ahead and document that requirement, uh, those that experience as business analysis experience and then apply for this credential. So there are six knowledge areas, as I mentioned earlier, we'll be going through those knowledge areas later on in this presentation. So out of those six knowledge areas, for four knowledge areas at least, you need to have 900 hours of business analysis experience related experience that you can document against that knowledge area. So in order to facilitate this process or in order to help you in this process, if you do a Google search, you could you would actually be able to find spreadsheets which would guide you through this particular process. So there will be spreadsheets which will have different knowledge areas defined where you can add your projects and then list down the amount of hours that you have spent against each knowledge area on that project on a particular spreadsheet. So just do a Google search, search for CBEP application uh, related spreadsheet, and then you will find relevant materials to help you out in that process. In terms of professional development units, you need to have a minimum of 35 hours of professional development units in the last four years. So what are these professional development units? So professional development units refers to the hours spent taking courses. So these can be classroom or online, which can be external or internal to your organization, which, which you have taken in order to better enhance your current business analysis knowledge. So for a course to qualify as a professional de development unit, 
it must be moderated or facilitated similar to a formal course where there must be a moderator for the session or a facilitator or an instruction who leads the group or an individual through that material so there must be a person who would guide you through the business analysis related material that you are going through in addition to that there must be a measurable learning objective set for that particular course and those must be directly applicable to the role of business analysis in terms of either changing the behavior or improving the skills of the business analyst who is going through that particular course the course that you are following in order to get the pdus cannot merely be a presentation on a specific topic for example you might actually attend a session on elicitation or you might attend a session on user stories attending that session alone where someone goes through a ppt would not count as hours for which you can which you can report against professional development units there must be an opportunity for students to interact with the material or with the person who is actually delivering that material so if you are attending a session where you where, where there is someone who who is going through a presentation on user stories it must be a session where you can interact with that person so it can be a classroom session or it can be an online session where you can actually ask questions clarify doubts interact and even submit assignments or work that you have done and that would actually count as professional development units so the person who is going through that course must have the opportunity to practice the task or objective being presented and being assessed by and be assessed by the facilitator or the moderator who is going through that course the subject matter that the person is going through must be directly aligned with the ba bob guide so there might be an individual who is going through some some sort of business analysis material which is not defined in the ba bob which will not count as pdus if you report those as pdus in your cbap application those might get rejected and to qualify the courses these courses which you are reporting as pdus must be completed by the submission date of the application so make sure that you complete the course and you have obtained the pdus and you have obtained some sort of evidence from your trainer to say that you have actually gone through this particular training and then you can actually include that as professional development unit so there may be instances where you are going through online material on your own there may be instances where you are following webinars you can actually report those as hours if you are interacting with the trainer if you are commenting for example if you after the webinar if you are commenting on that presentation or if you are clarifying doubts by in interacting with that trainer then you can certainly go ahead and report those as pdus so the education level that is expected is for you to have a high school diploma or a degree and in your application you need to report two references two references which will be who will, who will be endorsing your business analysis experience so it must either be a ma manager to whom you are directly reporting on a daily basis or whom you have reported to in the past and it can be a client internal or external to your organization and ideally it should be a cbap recipient so you need to put two such references like this in your cbap application form one thing to note when you are when you are putting references make sure that these referees that you put can be contacted by iiba if required i'll explain why this is required later on in one of the slides so once you have filled in the application form online you need to sign cbap's code of conduct which would be right at the end before you submit and you need to renew your credential once you have obtained your credential you need to renew your credential every 3 years by reporting 60 cdus we call them uh, ongoing development units where you have to keep contributing to the business analysis profession by conducting webinars or trainings yourself or by going through materials learning new things doing classroom sessions and so on you need to obtain cdus like that and then report that and then get yourself recertified every 3 years so these are the payments that are involved in order to apply for the cbap credential so the direct investments that you will need to make 
are in terms of the application fee as well as the exam fee so in order to apply for the exam you would need to pay make a payment of 125 us dollars if you are a iiba member and for non members as well it's 125 dollars and the examination fee for iiba members it would be 325 dollars and for non members it would be 450 dollars what it means by iiba member and non member is that by logging on to www.iiba.org you would be able to obtain the membership of iiba by obtaining the membership of iiba you would be able to get additional advantage of being at having access to the ba box the the latest updates from iaba as well as webinars or whatever articles that are posted on the iaba website and in addition to that you will get advantages like this where you get discounted rates for the application cbap application as well as the exam so it's highly advisable for you to get the iaba membership if you are thinking about obtaining a credential from iaba and the indirect expenses or the investments that you would need to make are in terms of updating the pdus so one thing that you will need to do is to go through a classroom session which would go through all the six knowledge areas and the competencies that are expected by a ba and get, get that knowledge through a classroom session online or a physical classroom session or a virtual classroom session and that would count as pdus so in order to go through that process in order to go through the classroom sessions you would need to make roughly a payment of 100 $750 which can go up to $3000 based on the classroom session that you enroll for so classroom sessions would run ideally for 3 to 6 days and the cost may range from $500 upwards if classroom sessions are not held in your country there might be a travel cost that is involved there's also an opportunity for you to join your local iiba chapter most of the iiba chapters conduct their own study group sessions so how this study group session operates is where people who are interested in obtaining a credential from iiba would actually get together and they would create their own materials and maybe we meet on a weekly basis and present there'll be one per, one or two people who take up some topics from the ba box they'll prepare the materials and present them to the other classroom member class members during that particular week so likewise the entire team who's in the study group will go through the entire ba box weekly or at a frequency that let me that they are meeting up presenting the content from the ba box and then discussing about the topics so there are chapters who are offering this particular facility for free there can be chapters who are offering this for a minimal cost but this option is actually a cost effective effort cost effective alternative to the costlier alternatives of obtaining paid training through classroom or online sessions in addition to that you will need to obtain some other form of learning material as well for example watermark learning is an is an organization which offers study packs where you can get the watermark learning book and then the cds and the question bank from watermark learning in order to prepare for the exam in addition to reading the ba box so the study pack study packs are actually useful where they'll they'll give you a guidance in terms of how to read the ba box as well as give some tips or mnemonics in order to remember or memorize the important areas in the ba box in addition to that you should ideally do some practice exams so various vendors would offer practice exams ranging from $50 to $300 so for example watermark learning they offer the practice exams they have different subscriptions where you can subscribe for one month two months or three months and so on and you can get access to to these questions similarly knowledge hut also provides question banks and then study packs like this where you can obtain additional knowledge that you require in order to sit for the exam in any case if you fail the cbap examination once you have 
once you have submitted the application and once you sit for the exam if you fail the exam you would need to retake the exam so in order to retake the exam there will be a cost involved where for members it would cost $250 and for non members it would co- cost $375 so a bit about the exam itself the exam would contain 120 multiple choice questions so most of these questions are case study related questions so you would get a paragraph and then you would need to go through that paragraph and identify which knowledge area or which task or technique this particular paragraph talks about and then answer the question based on that there can be questions which are competency based as well so iiba defines these certifications based on the four competency levels that we saw earlier so the cbap competency levels and the related competencies that the business analyst who is tra- sitting for this credential should have is defined in the cbap competencies guide which can be accessible through this link there would be only one correct answer for these multiple choice questions and there would be no negative marking so make sure that you ans- answer all 120 questions so the exam would be computer based online exam which would be of 3 and a half hours of duration the total duration for the exam would be about 4 hours you would need to set aside 4 hours to sit for the exam once you go into the examination center you would need to go through a security clearance process where they wouldn't t- let you take in anything inside the examination hall you would only be provided with a notepad and a marker and a eraser where you can write down whatever you need uh, while you are doing the exam before the exam you would need to fill a certain form which would admit you for the exam and then uh, once you have finished the exam you would need to go through a survey so the entire process would take about 4 hours examinations would be administered at prometric test centers you can check the closest prometric testing center by accessing this particular link there are countries which does not have prometric test centers so make sure that you check the nearest prometric center before you submit your application the pass mark is unknown so it depends on the examination you take so i'll talk a bit about the cbap application process as well so the cbap application process and the examination process there are two stages that are involved so after you have checked and fulfilled the criteria for cbap examination you should start filling your cbap application form so the first thing that you need to do is to obtain the membership as i mentioned earlier by paying 125 dollars the amount actually might vary based on the region or the country that you are registering from so just check the membership fee that is applicable for you once you have taken the membership your account gets created in the iba website you can start the application process by filling in the online application form you need to determine the two professional references that you are that you are planning to put in your application as i mentioned earlier so those once you have submitted the two professionals that you have put as references will get an automatic email uh, where they need to fill in an interactive form and then they need to submit that to the iba site and the next step once you have finished the application you need to submit the application form and you would need to make a non refundable application fee of 125 and you can make that payment using your credit card or your paypal account make sure that you print and keep a hard copy of, of the application form and the receipt that you need that that you get from iiba upon making that payment for your recording record purposes once you have submitted the form and the fee iiba will assess your application for competencies and fulfillment etc you will be notified the results within 2 weeks there might be instances where you would get a response from iiba before that as well there's a one one in a million or one in a billion chance that your application might actually get audited this is actually a random audit which iiba performs on applications if in case you are unlucky to get audited make sure that you are able to provide the re- relevant material or the hard copies of the certifications and the experience that you mentioned on your application form so if you are audited the references that you put 
will get a notification or they they will need to provide information about your application as well so make sure that your references are notified as well and once you have submitted if you get got audited once you have submitted your additional material and if your application was accepted initially itself you will have exactly one year in order to sit for the exam so once your application is accepted you would need to then think about the examination process so you would need to first of all make the examination fee fee examination fee by logging on to the iba website and you you need to make that payment again using your credit card or your paypal account and once you have made the examination made the examination payment you can check for the prometric centers which are close by to you so you need to log on to the prometric website which is mentioned here and then locate the test center which is closest to you and then select a date which is most convenient for you and book your examination so once once you have gone through this entire process you will have two attempts that you can make within this one year time period so if you fail or if you are unable to attend the session that you have booked first don't worry you have another chance to sit for the exam so that's a bit about the exam and the examination process itself so let's have a look at the type of questions that you can expect in the exam so there will be four general types of examination questions the first question type would be on definitions where you would be question directly on the definitions directly from the ba book so for example a model is something that depicts domain a model that depicts domain information is and you would need to select the correct answer from the list of answers that are given another type of questions that you can expect is to do with sequences where you need to identify the sequence in which tasks are performed in in business analysis as defined in the ba book so when you are study studying for the exam make sure that you study the order order in which the tasks are performed as defined in the ba book so you might see questions which sound like what is the first thing that you would do in terms of eliciting requirements from a client you would also find scenario based questions where you would need to go through a paragraph which which explains a scenario which a business analyst or a project is facing at a certain given point in time and you would need to select the best answer that you that would answer that particular scenario which is described you would also see questions which we call list of lists where they'll be testing your knowledge on groupings so what this means is you need to be able to identify commonalities or groups of ideas or techniques or processes or tasks or whatever which is defined in the ba book and then identify the correct answer based on that so for example there are 10 different types of requirement related attributes that are defined in the ba book so there might be a question where three or four types there might be a question where different types of requirement attributes are listed and in addition to that there might be a term which is not related to requirement attributes so you would need to identify the requirement attribute which is not correct from that list so you might find questions such as that as well so in terms of the distribution of questions by the knowledge area this table shows the percentage of questions that you can expect from each knowledge area so these are the six knowledge areas that are defined in the ba book business analysis planning and monitoring you can expect about 14% of the questions to be from that particular area about 12% of the questions can be from the elicitation and collaboration area 15% of the questions you can expect from the requirements life cycle management knowledge area strategy analysis knowledge area can contain about 15% of the questions again majority of the questions that you would find in the cbap examination would be related to requirements analysis and design definition why this would be the case is because a business analyst is mainly performing the analysis task so they would iba would question you mainly on this particular knowledge area and 14% of the questions can be from the solution evaluation knowledge area so in order to prepare for the exam make sure that you have a study plan so on average a person can take 
up to six months or more, even more than that in order to prepare for the exam. So for example, in my case, I spent about one year in going through the study group sessions, going through additional materials, going through the BA book. I went through the BA book about three times. I did about 2000 practice questions before I applied, started filling the application form. And then after filling the application form also, I spent about three months preparing for the exam and before sitting for the actual exam. So first of all, make sure that you read the BA book at least once or twice. Make sure that you're comfortable with the content that is there and then start filling the application form. Once you have filled the application form, make sure that you acquire the required amount of PDUs. You can do this parallelly while filling the application form by going through the different methods of obtaining the PDUs as I mentioned earlier. Read the BA book at least thrice is my advice for you. Make sure that you spend at least one hour per day to study the content in the BA book. Participate in local study group sessions or create your own study group and have group discussions. So this actually helps where different people from different organizations and different business domains with different amount of experience comes in and talks about their experience, which would actually add value to the discussion that you're having. Practice at least 1,500 to 2,000 questions. Make sure that you get a exam, examination simulator and then time the examination. Make sure that you try to finish the 120 questions in these practice questions within the three and a half hour time period. So brief introduction to the BA BOC. BA BOC is the globally recognized standard for the practice of business analysis. So the BA BOC guide describes the business analysis knowledge areas, the associated tasks, the activities and the skills that are required for a business analysis professional. The primary purpose of the business analysis guide is to define the profession of business analysis and it serves as the baseline based on which practitioners can practice their day-to-day -day work. It also defines the skills, knowledge and the tools and techniques that a business analyst could use in their day-to-day -day work. The BA book also is a framework that describes the business analysis tasks that must be performed in order to understand how a, how a solution can be delivered in order to create value for the sponsoring organization. So the main objective of a profession in, professional in business analysis is to understand the current status of a business organization, understand the change that they want to achieve in terms of developing new products, services, or in terms of moving into new markets or whatever business change that they want to achieve, and then suggest solutions that would actually meet this change that they want to achieve. So the BA book would define the framework. It would define the principles, practices, processes, tools and techniques that a BA should follow in order to achieve this objective of the organization. So the current version of the BA book is BA book version three. This has nine main chapters, six core knowledge areas are defined in the BA book. So the knowledge areas define a particular area that a business analyst needs to understand and the tasks that a BA needs to perform needs to be able to perform with respect to that particular knowledge area. So the business analysts are likely to perform the tasks in knowledge areas, in all these knowledge areas, iteratively, simultaneously and in rapid succession. So the BA will not be performing the tasks in knowledge areas, in these knowledge areas in sequence and the knowledge area tasks do not directly map to different phases in a project. So if we take PMI, PMI defines five main phases or process groups in a project. For example, the initiation, planning, management and control, execution, management and control, and then the closing. These particular process areas are, are not directly mapped to the business analysis knowledge areas. So the tasks defined in the BA book can be performed at any given point in time which is relevant for that particular scenario or con context of the project. These are the six main knowledge areas defined in BA book version three. So the first knowledge area is business analysis, planning and monitoring, strategy analysis, elicitation and collaboration, requirements analysis and design definition, requirements lifecycle management, solution evaluation, 
And in addition to that, the business analyst body of knowledge also defines underlying competencies that a business analyst should have. Let's take a look at the different knowledge areas a bit more in detail. Business analysis planning and monitoring defines the different tasks and techniques that a business analyst should ideally think about in terms of carrying out the business analysis activities during the project lifetime. So in this knowledge area, the business analysis approach that the BA is expecting to follow would be defined. The BA would identify the activities that he would would like to perform during the project. He would identify the stakeholders that are involved. He, he would identify how he would communicate or interact with those stakeholders. He would ident- the business analyst would identify the tools and techniques that he would utilize during the project in order to perform the tasks. The BA would also identify the process in which he would manage the requirements. So the business analyst would need to identify how he would elicit requirements, how he would model requirements, how he would analyze requirements, how he would communicate requirements and so on. In this particular knowledge area, the business analyst would also identify how he would manage changes in in his business analysis work and how he would track the progress of his business analysis work as well. So in summary, the BA planning and monitoring knowledge area actually defines how the business analysis activities and the performance of the business analysis tasks would be managed or governed right throughout the life cycle of business analysis activities. Second knowledge area is elicitation and collaboration. So this knowledge area mainly defines how the business analyst would elicit the requirements, how he would understand the needs, wants, the concerns of the main stakeholders that are involved in the project, as well as he would identify the context or the environment that these stakeholders are operating in. So the main objective of this particular knowledge area is to identify the underlying desires or the needs of the stakeholders that are involved, understand those requirements, perform elicitation activities in order to elicit the requirements, document the elicited requirements, present them back to the stakeholders or the or the people who provided those requirements and then finally get the confirmation for the elicited requirements. The third knowledge area is to do with requirements life cycle management. So this particular knowledge area would define how the business analyst would manage the end-to-end progress or the entire life cycle of requirements in a project. So in this particular knowledge area, the BA would need to identify how he would prioritize the requirements, how he would assess the requirements, how he would define the scope of the project, how he would define the scope of the solution, how he would obtain consensus about all the requirements, how he would manage conflicts, how he would resolve conflicts, issues, risks that are involved with respect to the requirements. In this knowledge area, the BA should also identify how he would manage the changes, how changes would be incorporated into the main set of requirements or the baseline requirements, we call them. The business analyst would also need to identify how he would trace the requirements, how he would do the horizontal and vertical traceability of requirements, starting from epic level business requirements right down to the code and the test cases as well. In this knowledge area, the BA should also define how he would maintain the requirements, what sort of requirements management tool he would use. It can, it, it will depend on the project approach that is followed. For example, in a predictive waterfall project approach, the BA would manage the requirements as maybe a detailed software requirement specification document. We call it a DSRS. And if it is a change-driven agile project, the BA might manage the requirements using a requirements management tools such as Jira or Trello. Finally, the BA would also learn about how approval should be obtained for finalized requirements in this particular knowledge area. Strategy analysis knowledge area is mainly related to enterprise analysis where the business analyst would mainly be focused on identifying the business need or objectives of the organization. So the main objective of this particular knowledge area is to identify two 
identify the strategic objectives identify the problems or opportunities problems that are faced by the organization or the opportunities that the organization would want to take advantage of based on those problems and opportunities the business analyst should identify the gaps that needs to be fulfilled through the solution so first of all the business analyst should identify different solution options that would actually help solve these problems or opportunities once those prob- so solution options are identified the business analyst should also be able to do a feasibility study of these solution options so the feasibility study can in, in include a operational feasibility technical feasibility time based feasibility and a cost benefit feasibility so once this feasibility study is done the business analyst should be able to define the solution option that he would want to take so the business analyst should be able to define a business case for the selected solution option and in this business case the business analyst would define the scope of the solution the scope inclusions exclusions assumptions dependencies and constraints that would be involved in this particular solution so the next knowledge area is requirements analysis and de- design definition in this knowledge area the business analyst would detail out the requirements so here he would learn about different modeling techniques in terms of text based modeling diagram based modeling or metrics or table based modeling so the main objective of this particular knowledge area is to identify how the business analyst can analyze the requirements that he has solicited make sure that he details out the requirements groups the requirements if there are related requirements be able to r- remove or omit requirements which are not related and then be able to document the requirements in detail using the modeling techniques that i de- described earlier once the requirements are documented the final stage of this particular knowledge area is to present it back to the stakeholders we call it a requirements walk through where the business analyst should verify and validate the resultant requirements that he has documented the final knowledge area is solution evaluation so once the requirements are documented the business analyst would re- prepare the requirements package and then communicate that to the development team and the qa team and the business analyst needs to collaborate with the implementation team on an ongoing basis and he should be able to evaluate the solution that is been built so solution evaluation will involve the solution being built as well as the solution that has been deployed on an ongoing basis the business analyst should understand the functionality of the solution that has been implemented whether the solution actually meets the real needs of the customers and he needs to identify any gaps or shortcomings of the solution while being implemented as well as after it is implemented the business analyst should also identify the transition requirements or requirements that needs to be in place for the solution to be deployed such as training data migration and so on and then assess the performance of the solution in the long run so those are the six main knowledge areas defined in the ba book we'll also look at underlying competencies six main areas of competencies that ba should have these are analytical thinking and problem solving behavioral characteristics that a ba should have business knowledge that a ba should have communication skills interaction skills and software applications related knowledge that a ba should have so in analytical thinking and problem solving a ba should have critical creative thinking he should he should be able to quickly understand a problem and then be able to create be creative in terms of suggesting solution options the ba should also have decision making capabilities the ba should be able to gather requirements or gather information about a particular scenario be able to document his findings in a proper manner and be able to make decisions based on his findings the ba should also be able to learn quickly he should be able to learn new domains new technology or new techniques that are required in order to perform his day to day tasks the ba should also have problem solving skills in order to be able to give solutions for the for the stakeholders and the ba should also have system thinking where the ba is expected to have an overall knowledge about the entire environment that is involved in the in the problem domain what we mean by systems thinking it 
it's not just related to systems that are involved in 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 the project but the ba should also be concerned about the micro and macro environment the legal aspects the economic or financial aspects the political aspects the cultural aspects and so on as well as be be able to understand the different integrations or different systems with which the solution would need to interact with as well as understand the different stakeholders their their culture their interests their beliefs everything needs to be considered when the ba is providing a solution the ba should also be ethical in his operations and he should be organized be able be able to organize himself in in eliciting and analyzing requirements and the ba should be trustworthy as well why these behavioral characteristics are important is that is because the ba when for example if he goes to do a project for a government organization which involves high security data the ba should will get access to that high security data and he needs to be trustworthy in terms of using that data and making sure that the ba would not misuse that particular information the ba should also have knowledge about the business that business domain that he he is doing a project for he should be able to understand the business principles and practices in terms of core business functions of an organization the ba should also have ideally have knowledge about different industries that they are working for for example banking finance insurance telecommunications if the ba is doing projects for those domains he should have some sort of knowledge about that domain the ba should be able to study the organization and then and he should be able to study different solution options that are there already in order to solve similar problems the ba should also have good communication skills oral writing oral skills oral communication skills as well as written communication skills and the ba should be a good teacher he should be able to understand different scenarios and be able to consult and give advice to different stakeholders the ba should also have good facilitation and negotiation skills he should be a good leader be able to influence stakeholders as and when required and the ba should also have good be a, be a good team player where he can interact with the implementation team as well as a team from the business side be the be the bridge between these teams in terms of delivering a solution to the stakeholders the ba should also have knowledge of software applications general purpose and specialized applications so general purpose applications are for example communication tools such as skype zoom and so on and then specialized applications can be requirements management tools such as jira trello or a requirements modeling tool such as bizagi or balsamic and so on so the ba should be able to quickly learn those sort of tools and apply them in his day to day work so let's finally have a look at live virtual classroom sessions and how they operate so live virtual classrooms provide you the capability to learn and get certified at your own at your convenience at a convenient place and time for you live classroom sessions live online training sessions are accessible from your home it is advisable that you have a minimum internet speed of 1 mbps it is flexible and easily accessible it's a flexible and easily accessible training for working professionals with busy work schedules across multiple geographical areas so you can log in from anywhere and any time that is convenient for you how this would operate is first of all you would need to enroll as a live virtual classroom participant when you register you will be provided with a joining link with a with the authentication details that you would need to provide once you are, when you are logging in make sure that you log in to the session on time with the cre- credentials provided you would be provided with the schedule once you register make sure that you log in at least 10 minutes prior to the session make sure that you get accustomed to the training uh, platform and make sure that everything works in terms of the screen microphone and so on the trainer will share the content in the form of ppt or any other material that he would use and then take you through the content during the training session so while the training session is going on it's perfectly fine for you to interrupt and then in order to clarify doubts not just questions you can post comments post ideas we need we want you all to make it make the session as interactive as possible the sessions will be recorded and will be shared with you for no extra cost 
you can also communicate with the trainer after the training the trainer would provide the contact details to you you can communicate with the trainer at your leisure and then clarify your doubts and have a constant ongoing dialogue with the trainer your feedback is also welcome so an online feedback form will be provided where you can provide your feedback on the training sessions so these are some of the features that are provided by the training platform the first feature is a chat option where you where you can interact with the trainer by selecting this option and chatting with the panelists to ask questions to clarify doubts and so on so you would see the panelists once you click on the option you would see the panelists listed on your right hand side select the panelist which will open a chat window you can send your message directly to the trainer if you want to ask a question while the trainer is explaining you can you can use the raised hand option in order to disturb the trainer the trainer would give you the opportunity to ask the question then and there and then the trainer would address your doubts once you have asked the question once the trainer has clarified your doubts and when you are satisfied with the answer that you got the trainer would ask you to lower your hand this is to make sure that the control passes back to the trainer and then then the trainer can proceed with the training you also have the option to type in your questions using the q&a option so the trainer would address these questions either live by reading through those questions and then answering that question verbally or the trainer can give the answer by typing an answer as well make the session set as interactive as possible ask questions clarify doubts and have a good learning experience so the live virtual classroom sessions the timings would be as follows there would be two training slots of 4 hours duration per day normal sessions would be from 6 am to 10 am india standard time or from 7:30 pm to 11:30 pm you can join any session as per your convenience you cannot change the session preference mid training so if you join a particular training session you would need to continue on with that particular classroom till you complete the training so that's it from me today i hope it, the session was interesting and you are, you all got to know a lot about the cbep certification do contact me through these different methods you can contact me directly through email linkedin skype or twitter i would be glad to answer whatever questions that you have so looking forward to hearing from you thank you very much <laughs>